What's up guys, my name is Jay Parrish. I'm the Digital Marketing Manager here at Coldwell Banker Elite. And today we're gonna to take you through everything that's involved with getting your Zap website set up. This is the website that is included at no additional cost for you, which includes being able to search homes, has a lot of great features, uh, custom pages that you can add in there. Really, everything that you need in a website today at no additional cost. So I wanna walk you through all the steps of that process how to get logged in, how to make all the updates. It is really important to work on this site because, you know, I give you an example that I've been working on my own personal site for like the last four or five years. And when you search my name, when you Google my name, this Zap site comes up above my own site. So even if you decide this isn't gonna be the site that you wanna use ongoing, you definitely wanna make sure that you have it all updated because consumers, your clients, even your friends might end up landing on this page through a Google search uh, before they get to the page that you might want them to go to. So you want to make sure that that's all set up properly. What we're going to do first is just show you guys simply how to get logged in, just like you log in to Zap, same as uh, Coldwell Banker Exchange or same as CBX. Um, same, sorry, same username and password as those. But you're going to go, as you can see at the top here, new.myzap.com. You're going to put in your username, which should be your first name, period, your last name, at coldwellbanker.com. Make sure you leave off the elite uh, for that. If you do not know what your password is, you will have to do the forgot password, and they'll send you an email on that. So you get signed in. Once you get signed in, that's going to drop you in the dashboard of Zap itself. We're not going to be working on that today. You're going to go to your picture in the top right, and you're going to click on My Website. Uh, this is how you always get to it. There isn't a direct way to go into the website. You always have to click your picture and drop that down. Uh, but this is the main hub for your website. Essentially, everything on this page is how you edit everything that's on your site. So it's not really complicated in the fact that it's all within this one page. There's no HTML or coding that you need to know. You just go in here and you edit everything as you go along. And basically, you can always preview your site by clicking on view my website. Um, so that'll take you to a preview of what your site looks like currently. And I'll just give you a kind of a quick run through of what my site looks like completely built out. And then we'll go back in and I'll show you exactly how you edit each of these items as you're going through. So you have this nice, really great landing page that you can update the photo. Your photo right now is probably something different than mine, but I do recommend choosing something that's local to your area that you work in and something that's recognizable and kind of goes along with what your brand is as you're thinking about that. But they have this great uh, search bar right here which they can search, it's what's called IDX search and that's something that typically you pay um, about $12 a month to Bright MLS for access to but you don't have to do that if you're using this site. And this takes you, allows you to search throughout all of coldwellbanker.com. Anyone that comes through your web page will be directed directly to you and they're considered as what they say you're their um, my agent. You'll be their agent whenever they come back to the page. You have your profile picture which you can update here. You have your star ratings and I'll show you guys how to do the stars, how to update those uh, testimonials a little bit later on. Your phone number, a quick little contact you button right there. Your bio is going to be up here at the top. Um, you just what you want to keep in mind, you can see how it only minimizes the first couple, it only shows the first couple sentences, so you want to make sure that those first couple sentences are what the most important things you want people to get because they may not see that little more button there. You're allowed to put in the area served that you work. Your sold homes will populate in here. This is something, it's not the prettiest of features because you don't get to pick the pictures, they just choose Google Map pictures and if, for example, you're in a neighborhood that Google Maps doesn't have pictures of, like a Lake of the Woods, for example, it's not going to show a picture at all. But the reason why I decided to keep that feature there is it does show that you are active and, you know, essentially when someone gets to your website, that's what you're wanting them to see, that you're knowledgeable, you're active, and it's a resource for them. So this kind of shows that you're active in the market. Uh, you have your blogs right here. Blogging, I think, is something I want to touch on is, is very important. It's something that a lot of people do not do not do, even though um, they're told over and over to do that. It doesn't have to be strictly real estate for your blog, but it has to be something that you're passionate about, things that you enjoy doing, and then maybe sprinkling in some real estate blogs here and there. Give you a quick little example of the blog here that I wrote, Why I Love Fredericksburg, Virginia. 
Uh, so I did that blog. I mean, probably took you know two hours or so. It was pictures that I'd already taken ahead of time. But I literally just talked about, you know, you can see here several paragraphs on why I love Fredericksburg. And I was just trying to be truthful in the parks that I take my family to and that we go to. Um, things that we like to do, places that we like to eat at, you know, talking about Carl's, all these types of things. Well, a long story short, this blog got picked up by the Fredericksburg Economic Development. They shared it out to their thousands of readers through their email. I ended up getting a seller client out of this blog solely and, you know, sold that and the commission from that all from this blog, which probably took about two hours of time. So that's not going to happen every time, but you're eliminating those ability, the ability for these types of things to happen if you're not blogging. So, you know, some examples that you could blog, you could blog about um, if you're, let's say you're a big pet lover, it could be your adventures with your dog. Um, you know, things that you do around town. I like to talk about Fredericksburg and the things that they're able to do, you know, with my family, taking my girls around, just take pictures while you're doing the things, then come back, write a few paragraphs on it, and then post it. Uh, it's not something to be scared about, but people, you know, like to read about what's going on around things that they want to be able to do with their family. So uh, just find something that, that fits for you. You know, uh, another thing I like blogging about is restaurants. Just go to a restaurant, um, you know, have the food, take a couple pictures of it, and then just, you know, give your opinion about that restaurant. People love that. People are always looking for new places uh, to eat. So that's something uh, to keep in mind. But blogging is something that's definitely important and helps build out your page. Uh, you always want to make sure that you have a video here. I highly recommend you going and doing a 30 second to a minute and a half long introduction video about yourself. Just kind of a, your elevator pitch, saying hello. Uh, it basically makes you... It makes you seem real you know they can relate to you they can tell who you are a little more than pictures and words can describe if you're not comfortable with that or not going to do that make sure you put some video in here whether or not it's it's our cultural banker elite story video which you can get from youtube uh, make sure that it's that there's something there because this helps build your traction on google the more you have this page built out <clears throat> your client reviews as we talked about in the beginning you can send out your reviews uh, to your past clients or as you close them to get your star ratings on here. There are two different options that we'll talk about. You can use testimonials you have from other sites by copying and pasting them in. But if you do that option, you, re you remove your star ratings, which I think is definitely important for you to, to have those star ratings. You want to make sure to have the connections to all the social media sources that you use. If you don't use them all, don't include them. You don't want to have open a Twitter account and then have nothing on there. So when people land on it, they don't know if you're still in the business or not. Um, it gives them a link to your mobile app, which I'll show you guys where that link is if you want to share it. You want to fill in your experience, your credentials and memberships. And credentials and memberships <coughs> are important. Your community involvement is important. If you're involved in the community, share that. You know, uh, as a lot of you know, if you know me, I was a teacher prior to going into real estate, so that's something that's important to me. Education and being involved in that in our in our community. I was on the Spotsylvania Education Foundation board. I include that information in here. Uh, I'm part of a stuff the bus drive every single year. Make sure you kind of include that. That you know, if you're a big member um, volunteer at the SPCA. Uh, make sure that you put that stuff out there because people want to know that you care about the community and that you're giving back in some way or another. Down here at the bottom are called property insights. Uh, you can see these say off market because these are properties that were listed. So any property that you go visit with your clients or by yourself, you should do a property insight for that. And I'll show you here in just a little bit how to do property insights. And as you scroll down, um, I think these are almost even more important than property insights are local insights. So if you're an agent that's just starting out, these are ways to, if you don't have those sold homes that we have at the top, this is a way to show a client who's looking at your page, oh man, they've seen this property, that property, they're looking all in the area that I'm looking for. I think this might be somebody that I want to work with because they know the area they're out there looking at these properties. Uh, it's also really cool that these uh, property insights, if this was an active listing and somebody landed on 303 Caroline Street, your picture is going to pop up on there saying property insight and they're going to see that you're somebody who's looked at this property and maybe somebody that um, might be a great resource for them as opposed to them going to the listing agent. So those are, those are really important. 
that's pretty much it. Oh, and local insights are going to be on certain areas. So it can be on neighborhoods like you see here, Fawn Lake, um, as you filter through here. It could be on Fredericksburg, Virginia. So you can do the name of a city. Uh, downtown Fredericksburg, you can do different ones for all these. You can do 22401. What's cool about that is if someone searches homes in downtown Fredericksburg, which is what most people do, they search um, location, not necessarily a particular address, you're going to pop up with your picture down towards the bottom, giving whatever feedback you gave about that area. Again, making yourself come across as a local expert and somebody they want to reach out to. So if we scroll up here, there's a section here called resources. And these are, think of it as links outward to other sources. Uh, remember, when people come to your site, they're looking for more information about real estate or the industry or schools. Uh, so all these can be different links like the Stafford School, Spotsylvania Schools, Fredericksburg City Schools. These are links to those school um, websites so that they can go and get more information about the schools. You can create um, you know, a local utilities page, service providers, um, about Fredericksburg. I have a link here to Movement Mortgage for Nick Bond, who, you know, who I typically work with. Whoever you work with, you might want to have a link out to their page. The pr cool part about resources is it's also a tab, as we scroll all the way to the top, a tab at the top here so that people can easily find that. A couple other things, we have a buying and a selling page you already have a corporate buying and selling page that looks great that's all set up in there but you can create a custom page and i'll show you what that looks like my custom buy page so you can put in a i purchased a stock photo that i put in here and then you talk about your home buying experience what is your home buying experience you know what's what makes it different working with you versus other people and then any blogs that you wrote that are considered buying that you categorize in the buying area uh, will populate down here at the bottom so it's personalized to you if you go to my sellers page um, I updated a new uh, stock photo with with my new sign here and then talk about your selling process what are clients going to go through when they sell a home with you what are the steps that you're going to do how are you going to market that what makes you different so you do have to build all this text out and then again down at the bottom any selling blogs that you have written are going to populate in there so i think it's important to do that to customize it to you you will see the difference when you go in and look at your buy and sell page they look great but they just look a little more corporate i would say and then you can the last thing you can do so franchising global luxury and international those are set in stone um, we can't change those um, links right there but you can add in custom links so i can show you two examples of what i did i did a smart home smart home page um, again purchased a uh, header image here from a stock photo um, company there's a bunch of them, different ones out there big stock photo iStock.com. Um, Unsplash is another good one um, to be able to find photos. Pix Pixabay, P-I-X-A-B-A-Y.com is another one to be able to find images. You can't just use an image that you get on Google. You do have to purchase that or use one of the sites that allow has free stock images. But I just it's essentially kind of like a blog page. This was a blog that I wrote about smart homes. Uh, just kind of you know going back to blogging, and I'm not an expert writer. I write the way that I talk. And I think people like to read a casual read that's not anything very serious. I do recommend you get it, your blogs, you know, have somebody else proofread it because sometimes we miss our own, you know, miss our mistakes with that. Um, so I just added some pictures in here. You can see these are smart home items that I even actually, I wrote this before I even owned any smart home products. So I took these pictures at the Massaponics office and I created this, this layout that you see here on the screen. Uh, and Canva. And that's C-A-N-V-A dot com. Everything that I'm showing you on this page that I've done, I created in Canva. So I highly recommend using Canva. And the cool thing on these custom pages, you can add in a YouTube video. So this is not a video that I made about uh, smart homes, but it is one that our brand, Coldwell Banker, did. And I just paste the link in here. And so a, co a consumer who's coming to my page can learn some information about what actually makes a home a smart home. And in the last page that I did, now don't get overwhelmed by this page because it, it did take me a lot of time to do it, but one of the most important things I think for your web page is your testimonials, what other clients think about you. So I did take the time. This took me several hours 
uh, to create this page. I did create it all in Canva. But uh, it's I think it's that important because when clients land on your page now, they are doing the research to find out what other people think about you. Just think when when you're looking for a restaurant to go to, you know, the type of research you're doing online, you're looking for their star ratings, you're looking to hear what other people think about that. This is buying a home or selling a home is one of the biggest transactions that a person makes in their life and they only do it a couple of times. So they're doing that research. So I think it's worth the effort to be able to share your testimonials. So I did create this header through Canva. I had all pictures that I've taken with clients or taken of clients in their homes, putting all those in there. And then what I did, all the testimonials that I have, I pulled out the main sentence I thought and put this in a graphic. I did a gray one, a gray template and a blue template in Canva. Um, and if, you, you know, if you're interested in these templates, you can reach out to me and I can send them to you. But it's just very simple as far as just a background with a picture and then the text here. And then what you can do when you get a new testimonial is like, so, so the next one I put in, I'll just get my blue template and that'll go right above this. So it just alternates as you go down um, and I did put their entire um, testimonial in the smaller text, and that's good to have in there for SEO purposes in Google. But you just scroll all the way through. All the client testimonials that I have are in here laid out. So someone that's actually thoroughly researching me, I feel like by the time that I talk to them, they've already done the research and already understand what type of service I'm going to provide for them. So again, this is a extra thing here. You don't have to do this, but I'm just wanted to show you the ability of what you can do on the site. So um, let's go back into, you're going to go back to your Zap dashboard. So again, remember that's under new.myzap.com. You click on your picture and you go to my website. So Everything that I've just done um, outside of creating graphics in Canva can be done directly in here. So first things first um, are your, this is your website URL over here to the left. This is how you get to your site that I just walked you guys through. Now if you plan to use this as your main site, it's not mandatory, but I would say that you 100% should do this. You should buy your own domain name through GoDaddy or whatever ever provider that you would like and then forward it to this because as you can see here this is a very long URL you wouldn't really want to have this on your business card you're definitely not going to be able to tell somebody how to find that but you would want to forward it to that and I have some very easy steps if that's something that you get to that process just let me know I can show you exactly how to do that um, so just reach out to me another thing we have here is your mobile app URL now this is really cool I put it in my email signature it says if you want to search for homes on the go, search here. But this link actually takes you to the App Store or takes you to uh, the Google Play Store and allows the client, your client, to download the Coldwell Banker app. And when they download it via this link, they are connected to you automatically and you are, you are their agent and anything they do on there, any property they look at, you will be able to track that. So those are the two links that I would recommend giving out to people. If you want to change your cover photo, you just click up here in the top right hand corner. It gives you the minimum dimension, so the photo must be no smaller than 1920 by 1080, and you can set it directly at that. And it can be no larger than 12 megabytes, but you just choose the file, you'd go into your, um, you'd have your file saved somewhere, and you just download it in there. Now certain things you might find crop a little differently, so you might have to crop it to a different size. You can do that again in Canva. Um, to make sure that it fits the way you want it to when you go and look at it um, on the home page, you know how it lays out with the bar right in the with the search bar right in the middle. So, um, and then if you want to change your profile picture, most of those should be already set up for you. But if you see a gap or anything in here, like um, you know it's cut off a certain part, or you had a portrait photo, I mean a landscape photo that's long ways. You just go to this little pencil icon here. Um, you can edit the photo. As you can see, you can just adjust it in and out like that. You can move it around, go to crop. And if I wanted to do a different photo, I would just, you know, um, actually, let me double check that. That is how you edit it. The plus sign would be how you change it. So you click on the plus to give yourself a new photo. And I'm not going to change that for now. So as you scroll down here, Again, as I said, everything is on this page right here. The first thing that comes up is the About Me. This is your personal statement. This is your bio. Most of you already have this created and saved in another document. 
One key thing that I do recommend when copying and pasting is that if you are copying it from another document or another website that you always paste it as plain text. So if I, just to give you an example of what that looks like, if I highlight my name here, copy it, if I right click again, you will see, let's see here, oops, let me edit that. If I right click in here, you'll see the option to paste and paste as plain text. This might be called something a little bit different on a Mac, but there is, a, I think it's called um, paste special or something along those lines. But what you're doing is you're removing the back coding behind it in the HTML. It's just going to make it land in here better. I've had to do some weird stuff in here, like put in upside down question marks. So just make sure you always paste as plain text anywhere you're putting anything in here. So you just want to put all your bio in and then you save it. That's very simple. Uh, the custom pages I was telling you guys about are also under content. So if you go to buy a home, most of yours will have the custom page turned off. And you can also turn it off at any time. Once you turn it off, it'll, it'll let you know um, that all your information is going to be saved. Uh, but it'll go back to the previous page. So you could be working on it because it might take you some time uh, to edit that page out. Um, to edit it before you want to officially do it. So you can be editing it and then switch it back to the other one until you're finished. But you can change your header photo, header image right here. You can change your banner text, which is the title text that goes over top of the header. Um, you can change your heading and then you change your content and you can choose whether or not you want your blogs to display at the bottom. And these are all these little green little um, on off keys right here. So green means you're going to be showing the blog. If it's gray, you're not going to be showing the blog. Uh, same exact thing if we go up here to sell a home. You have all the same options in here. Changing your image by clicking right here. Um, you can change your banner text, your heading, and your content. Uh, and then again, your blog's down at the bottom. And any custom pages you want to create is over here to the right. Pretty simple. And again, it's kind of just like setting up a blog. Um, you create uh, a new custom page. You just click on that. Show you what it looks like here. You're just going to go in and add a cover photo. So again, having that photo already set somewhere in your computer, you'll need to have that downloaded, saved, or purchased. You put the title to what your page is going to be. And then you put all your content in here. And you can go in and add in photos. You can add in a YouTube link. Uh, just like I said here, you just copy and paste in the YouTube link. And that's going to then populate that video like you saw in my Smart Home page. You can change uh, the content. You can put in numbering system, bulleting. You can decide the alignment, whether you want it left aligned, centered, or over to the right. And you can add in any links. And you can also change the size of, the, of that. But that's pretty much it. You can't really mess it up. One little tip that I will give you if you are, at, are adding photos in, let's say if you're putting the cell phone image in that you've taken, it's going to take it in its full size and it's going to take up the whole screen. So one thing I do recommend is um, going into Canva or if you know how to um, crop or change image sizes in another source like a Photoshop or something like that, uh, make sure that you do that ahead of time so that you can, so it's laid out properly in here. Okay, like one good uh, good layout is a rectangular size layout like you saw on my um, custom. Let me show you that page real quick again. If you go back to the reviews section, <clears throat> you can see all these images are rectangular. I think they're like 1,500 pixels by 500. It's a pretty good layout, um, a good crop that goes across the screen and doesn't take up too much. So these are the custom pages. If you're diving into the custom pages and you're um, you know, having some issues with it, just let me know. I can help you walk you through this in more detail. But I, And during this tutorial, I just want to make sure, show everybody where everything's at, how you do everything. Don't hesitate to reach out to me if you have any questions at all. Uh, so that is your content section. As we scroll down to the video, which as a reminder, I said you want to make sure you have a video in here. Highly recommend having a 30 second to a minute and a half bio of yourself. Uh, you don't have to have professional equipment to do this. Actually, the more authentic, the better. And, you know, it's just presenting yourself and saying hi, what it is that you do and how you're going to help them out. 
all you do is you take the YouTube link, it has to be in YouTube, and then you just paste it directly in here, and that's it. It'll populate over here to the right. So a very simple process. Some people, you know, if you are never uploaded anything to YouTube, what I recommend is going to YouTube and asking how do you start, you know, type in how do you start a YouTube channel. All you need is a Gmail account. It's free. Um, there Actually, there's a whole video on how to do that through um, that Matthew has done also if you want to go to our page to look for that. Uh, social media, this is where you link all your social media options in here. So you let, you just click on it and then it's going to log you into Facebook, connect you to Facebook. Make sure that you do choose your business Facebook page. It's going to initially have you connect with your regular account. Once you go past that, it'll say which page do you want this associated with. So just link up all the ones you had. As a reminder, really focus on the ones that work for you. The ones I do the most are Facebook and Instagram. You know, you don't need to have these other pages like a Pinterest or a Twitter, but if that's something that's in your wheelhouse and you're familiar with and more comfortable with, the more the better because it's creating links back and forth between these sites, which overall helps increase um, whether or not you show up on Google versus other people. Uh, your area served. If you don't want a certain tab to show up, you can just turn, the, turn it off over here in the green. You can change the name of all these things. If you wanted to call it um, My Territories or something creative, you can change that by just clicking here on the pencil icon and changing the name uh, to whatever you want that to be. <clears throat> you can choose up to 21 areas um, that you serve. As I've learned, you can make your own decision, but real estate is very hyper-local, so instead of putting in 21 different places that you work, you might want to focus on the main places that you that's, that's your territory. Um, we do have some agents that definitely cover up and down the 95 corridor, and if they want to put all those in there, then that's perfectly fine. You're able to do that. Um, you just click here to add in a new city, and let's just say I was going to add in Fairfax. You just click that, and it adds it in, and then you can just as easily exit out. My sold homes, that's the one where it shows that properties that you have sold, not the most beautiful pictures. If that's something that's just gonna bother you, you can turn that feature off and they won't show at all. So you just click it off and you're good to go. Agent insights and local insights. I'm sorry, yeah, so agent insights are property insights and local insights. What I recommend and homework for all of you, whether you're a new agent or an experienced agent, this is free marketing. So. Property insights, you can see all the ones that you have completed. You can pull up the details of those. And I think, yeah, you can go back in and actually edit those if you wanted to change it or you wanted to remove something. Um, you can edit those right in there. But you just scroll down here to add property insights. You just search the actual address um, that's on there. Let's see if I know one right off. So I'm not finding one, but let's just say this one here in Flintville. <clears throat> if the property is not available, meaning if that address doesn't come up, then you can't do one on it. But what I recommend is that every single property that you go and view yourself or the client, you go in here and create this. You have up to 4,000 characters, which is a lot, but just you know, say a few things about the house, what your opinion of was that what your opinion of the house was, I would make sure to be, this is going to be public. So it's only going to be on the Coldwell Banker site, but I wouldn't go in there bashing what another agent did with the house or, you know, these are, this is actually going to be public and it is going to be your voice with your picture beside it. So typically I recommend, you know, the positive things you could say about the house, but you can, you know, you can be honest if the house um, needs some work and say, hey, you know, this house is a great investment, you know, use your words wisely when you're doing this. Um, but it is a great way to get your name out there and it also creates what's called backlinks. So it's going to allow people to allow the internet to backlink to your site, which is going to help Google again recognize yours as an important page. Um, so you would just click on a few different things and you would hit publish and then it's going to be active. The other one is local insights. Another part of homework for that is I recommend that you go in and add a local insight for everything that's in your territory. So you could, like I said, you could do 22401 as an insight. 
you give a headline for it, some quick little comments, and then you do some tags, like maybe you're talking about restaurants or um, entertainment or um, you know the beautiful houses in this area. Then you go in and do one for 22407. Um, every zip code that is part of your territory, you create one of these for. It's free, your name's gonna be out there, and these are the type of searches that the consumers are actually doing. Um, so you can do one for Stafford, Virginia. If it doesn't populate in here just like before, um, so you want to make sure you go down here and select it, and it's exactly it has to come up in here. So if the neighborhood you're looking for doesn't show up, then you can't do a local insight for that. And you also don't want to have the same comments for each one. So if you're doing one for Fredericksburg, Virginia, and then you're doing another one for downtown Fredericksburg, make sure they're different. Make sure one is talking about Fredericksburg as a whole and the other one is focusing on the downtown area. But these are really important things and again, highly recommend you doing as many of these as you possibly can. Um, free marketing is the best kind of marketing and it's just a matter of it takes some time but then, then you're putting your name out there. Um, so Agent Insights, very important. The local SEO playbook. Um, this is really just a... Uh, guide for you all the things that you should do to help build your SEO which is your search engine optimization which is essentially Google and how your page ranks against others so as you can see this one's talking about one of the things we already talked about if you have a domain name have have it forward visitors to your zap site uh, make sure to forward without masking that is an option that you'll see and masking means it would cover up the URL at the top and put your other um, URL in there and that's not something you can do with Zap. But then link building gives you, these don't take you anywhere, they don't help you do it, it just tells you things you should do. You should create a Google My Business page, create a Yelp profile for your business, create a Yellow Pages directory. It's just telling you all these different things that you should do that all help improve um, your overall SEO. So just kind of go through these as a checklist of all the things that you should do. Um, write property insights on homes you toured a few times each week. Periodically ask your contacts to give you ratings and reviews on Zap. Uh, now I do, um, actually we're not to that point yet. I just don't want to forget to go over that. And then social media is talking about all the things you can do on social media to help build up your SEO. Um, next thing is resources. Again, you can change the name of resources. Remember, resources are links out to other places on the internet, other websites. Uh, I kind of went over the things that, that I use. You can be creative with this. You could change the name to your favorite, um, your favorite restaurants, uh, your favorite parks, your favorite places to shop you know whatever you want to do and then you just give these links out to different places it could be your home source resource you know your your home buying tips you can get creative with whatever you want it to be and wherever you want to link them to um, you want to make sure that you click add to navigation when you add things in and all you do is you type the name which will appear like movement mortgage you copy and paste in the URL and then you click on the category and you can also do uh, new categories, which would go under other. And then you're going to type in exactly what the name of that is. So, for example, communities, things to do, schools are all ones that I added. You can do up to 15 resources. So I have, the way I have it listed right now, I have seven more that I could add in. You don't have to use all of them, though. You could just have one or two. But definitely an important thing to add for your site. And as you see, I'm scrolling down for you, but you can also click these tabs up here at the top to jump around. So if we go to reviews, that takes us right here. If you remember, I told you there were two different types of reviews that, um, that you, have, you know, are able to do. So you have the reviews that you send out to clients asking them for a review and they give you a star rating. That is what I recommend. That's what I have selected, which is display all reviews received. But let's say you've been in the industry for a while and you have 45 reviews on Zillow and you want to include all of those. Well, if you choose display testimonials that are managed in Zap, so you can't do both of these, it gives you the ability to create a testimonial and then you copy and paste in that testimonial. The star ranking and reviews are removed. Uh, so I think that the stars have a huge value because that actually populates on a Google search next to your website how many star ratings that you are. 
So I recommend going with the second one. And let me show you how you get those reviews. So we're actually going to jump um, back and we're going to go to a contact and I'm just going to use myself as an example here. So I'm just going to search a contact. So you have to already have your contact in Zap. Then you're going to go to more and you're going to click ask for review and it's going to create uh, an email already for you that you know says since we've had a chance to work together I was hoping you wouldn't mind writing a review of my professional services and you can also edit to make that exactly what you want it to be and you just and it shows you as their local real estate agent you just click send email and that goes out to them um, as a quick little tip to that I had reviews in other places other than on the zap site what I did is I went in and copied and pasted in the review that they gave me to ask if they could put that review on this page for me. So I don't see any problem with doing that. I sent it out to six different clients. The next day, five of them left reviews for me. Another really cool thing about reviews is uh, the fact that um, on here, your reviews rank you amongst other agents within the company. So whoever has the most reviews is going to come up higher than somebody who has lower reviews. So that is incentive for you to get reviews on here that when people land on coldwellbanker.com, they don't already have an agent. They go to find an agent page. That's how people are ranked based off of their reviews. So I think it's important to, to go in there and get some reviews and get those added in there. The last couple things are your professional info. So this is your my experience, your credentials and membership, and your community involvement. Uh, so you essentially can just uh, add new, and then you just type in whatever it is, and it'll populate right in here. You can change um, the way that these are listed, and you can also just delete them off. Um, so I'm going to cancel that out. And then if you want to do credentials and memberships, you change those right here, and community involvement right here okay so again just showing how well-rounded you are is essentially um, the purpose of that the last main tab is what's called website tracking um, it's a little more advanced but if you're familiar with Google Analytics and you want to track who's going to your site whether they're coming from a mobile device or using desktop uh, this is where you would go to um, to track that so you would put your Google Analytics tracking code in here and there's Facebook Pixel, which is very similar to Google Analytics, um, except that it's tracking when you're doing ads from Facebook, so you're seeing how many people are actually ending up where you wanted to send them. So that is your uh, Facebook Pixel. The other thing that we've talked about a lot, but we haven't, I haven't showed you how to do it, is your blog. Okay, so your blog is in a little bit different section here. So if you go up to the top right-hand corner, you are going to um, right under my website is the blog and when you first go into the blog it's gonna pop up a section here for you that's gonna ask you if you wanna have your own personal blog or if you wanna syndicate Coldwell Banker Elite's blog so if you haven't created any blogs I highly recommend at first syndicating the Coldwell Banker Elite blog so any blogs that we have in here that, that we've published are going to populate on your page so it looks like you also have blogs um, in there too so you can't do both so once you go to create your first blog then you would switch it to your own personal blog but it's very simple it looks just like creating a custom page like we did earlier so you're going to write a new post you can add your cover photo for your blog remember blogs visually um, it's important to have photos that's why I said when you're out doing events when you're out going to restaurants just take pictures your cell phone that you have right now uh, more than likely if it's within the last probably five years has an excellent camera built in and you can use apps like Google Photos or Snapseed to edit those photos and to you know make them look a little bit brighter a little bit cleaner but make sure to include a lot of pictures in your blogs the only big difference in the blog and the custom page is the custom page allows you to do videos, YouTube videos, where this only allows you to do links and photos in your blog. And after you hit publish, I think you, yeah, you decide which category the blog is, buying a home, selling a home, community lifestyle, or real estate news and trends. And then you can add um, location tags, so basically letting you know where the, which area city this this blog is related to you don't have to do that but it's optional so that's 
pretty much everything that you can do in the website. Uh, it's all right here. It's really just sometimes doing a little work in Canva to make some of the images pretty. You don't even have to do that. But I highly recommend you go through every single one of these steps that we just went through and get your bio updated. You have a video in here. If you don't um, have your own video, you put one of Coldwell Banker Elite's uh, videos in there, the Our Story video, something, maybe a video about Fredericksburg, um, everything just having it all filled out. This is really going to help your traction on Google. And then people are going to find this page, and that's going to be able to, you're going to see, um, you're going to see your clients finding this page, and it's important that they land on something and see it shows that you're active, shows a great resource for them, and makes them want to work with you. If you have any questions at all, don't hesitate to reach out to me. Um, I love when you guys are working on this and you know you have any questions. I think a website is extremely important. It's something you guys need to spend some time on. If you haven't done it, you know, sit down. You can pause this video, go back, take your time going through it. Any trouble that you have, don't hesitate to reach out. Thanks a lot. Have a great day.